Yeah, example five here. So um, you should know how to start and you should know the basics. All right. Um, now, um, just a reminder, what we have to do is show that uh, whenever this is true, that this follows so that we can say uh, that the limit is x goes to a of f of x is equal to l. In our situation, we want to be able to say that the limit is x goes to a of x squared minus a squared is equal to zero. Of course, that would mean that a is a, um, l is zero, and uh, f of x is the quadratic x squared minus a squared. Yeah? Cool. All right. So um, how do we do this? Well, um, to start, uh, we know that we need to uh, adopt these two statements um, in our particular case. So that would mean that the start of our proof uh, looks as follows, which is that we write absolute value of x minus a is less than delta automatically imply um, that uh, absolute value of x squared minus a squared f of x minus l be less than epsilon. That's what we require so that we can say that this is true. All right, and we need this to be true for every epsilon. Um, now, as we have done in the previous examples, what we're going to have to do is create a relationship between delta and epsilon, and we're going to um, create that relationship by manipulating this statement. So let's get on with that. Um, first, note that this statement can be written as follows, which is absolute value of x squared minus a squared is less than epsilon. And then next, uh, we can uh, rewrite it um, in equal um, form as x minus a times x plus a um, is less than epsilon. It's just that x squared minus a squared factors in this way, right? Cool. All right, so it's just a rewriting of this. Um, that is, this is a rewriting of that. Okay, cool. You get it. You get it. All right, next, we're going to say that what we have is the same as x minus a. Uh, times um, x plus a is less than epsilon and this is just using absolute value properties um, and I've explained it in previous vi videos and previous examples okay cool and then next we're gonna say that absolute value of x minus a is less than uh, epsilon divided by absolute value of x plus a and we know that we're headed in the right direction because this is a very similar looking statement to that. Yeah, uh, all we have left to do is uh, replace this denominator involving x uh, with a number and then we're done. Okay, cool. All right, um, so to do that, uh, we make an assumption about delta and this assumption makes um, a lot of sense and you can pick a bigger delta than one but uh, delta equals one makes for easy computation uh, remember, if you find a particular delta, then um, smaller deltas will have to work. So it doesn't matter like how big a delta you start uh, with in your assumption. Uh, but yeah, delta equals one uh, will do for us. And uh, here, that would mean that we have absolute value of x minus a is less than one because we chose delta to be one, and that's our assumption. So so. Then next, we observe that absolute value of x uh, minus absolute value of a is always less or equal to absolute value of um, x minus a, which in turn we just said is less than 1. Okay, cool. And so then, um, by the way, to uh, uh, believe that, you can prove it. Um, you know, um, first, if a is 0, the equality holds, right, in here. Yeah, but otherwise, think about it. It makes sense but you can prove it uh, fairly easily. Anyway, um, writing this then is going to allow us to write the following, which is absolute value of x minus absolute value of a is less than 1, which means that the absolute value of x um, is less than uh, the absolute value of a plus 1. Now, uh, by the triangle inequality um, theorem, we know that the absolute value of x plus a is um, less than the absolute value, less than or equal to, uh, less than or equal to the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of a. And this is so because, well, uh, if a is zero, equality holds, right? But otherwise, um, I have a video proving this triangle inequality, so you should watch that. And I'll try to link it below this video. Uh, but anyway, um, if we have that this is true, 
And we also know that um, the absolute value of x is less than, strictly less than the absolute value of a plus 1, then we can write that the absolute value of x plus a is strictly less than, uh, because we're going to replace this with something uh, that's bigger than it, um, strictly less than the absolute value of a plus 1 plus the absolute value of a. This and this are the same, and what I did is use the fact that the absolute value of x is less than the absolute value of um, a plus 1 to replace this absolute value of x with um, a plus 1, absolute value of a plus 1, uh, which allowed me to go from a, a less than or equal to to a strictly less than. Yeah, because again, the absolute value of x is less than the absolute value of a plus 1 by what we had done here. Okay, cool. So then um, I'm running out of room, so I'll come over here. So then what we have is that uh, the absolute value of x plus a is less than 2 times the absolute value of a plus 1. And we get there by combining these two, right? Okay, cool. Um, uh, all right, um, that's useful because uh, if we know that, then we know that um, we can take this and uh, write the following, which is the absolute value of x minus a uh, is less than epsilon divided by, um, we're going to replace this with something that's bigger than it, so um, 2 times absolute value of a plus 1, which completes our proof essentially, because now what we're going to say is, we're going to say, um, let me make room somewhere, um, perhaps over here what we're gonna say is um, we're gonna say that you should choose um, Delta to be um, the minimum of 1 and epsilon divided by 2 times absolute value of a um, plus 1 and um, if 1 works great if not, then epsilon divided by uh, 2 times absolute value of a plus 1 will always work. And I should probably be careful and do that. But yeah, you uh, knew. Okay, um, yeah, so this delta value will always work. And I'll, and I'll do the um, proof uh, checking that it will work. So in other words, I'll do the check right now. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is basically how you go about doing uh, these delta epsilon proofs um, and, and slightly more sophisticated um, examples like this one but um, yeah let's check that we've found the correct uh, delta okay the correct delta meaning uh, the correct delta that will allow us to say that um, whatever um, I'll do the check in blue the correct delta that will allow us to say that whenever um, x minus a is less than delta that we will have um, absolute value of x squared minus a squared minus zero is less than epsilon because that's what we need that this automatically imply this in order for us to say that this is a true statement yeah okay cool so let's start here and notice um, well let's start here and eventually we need to get here but yeah first notice that starting here means that we have absolute value of x minus a is less than delta is um, epsilon um, divided by uh, 2 times absolute value of a plus 1. So I'll do that. And notice that uh, what we just wrote, this um, means that um, 2 times absolute value of a plus 1 uh, times absolute value of x minus a is less than epsilon. Okay. Cool. Now, uh, we had written that um, 2 times absolute value of a plus 1 is bigger than absolute value of x plus a, right? So if this is true, then surely um, we should have true that absolute value of x um, plus a uh, times x absolute value of x minus a be less than epsilon because this is already less than epsilon but if we replace this with something that's smaller than it right then surely 
this will remain less than epsilon. So that's why we, we can do this. And of course, then that means we've got um, x um, plus a times x minus a uh, is less than epsilon, which is absolute value of x squared minus a squared um, is less than epsilon. And if we so chose, we could have written that as absolute value of x squared minus a squared minus zero is less than epsilon, meaning uh, we've got whenever this is true that this is true and therefore this is a true statement yeah cool i hope you enjoyed this and um take care uh there's one more video on delta epsilon limit proofs and it's the hardest one so watch it take care